The board game of Purim is a cooperative game where the players work together to foil the plans of the wicked Haman and to save the Jews from extermination. In order to win, the players need to end the game with an equal or greater number of gold cubes as there are black cubes in each and every province. If there is a single province that has more black cubes than gold at the end of the game, the players lose. To set up the game, shuffle the action deck, the messenger deck, and the province deck. Place each of the decks beside the board with the province deck face up. Next, place the calendar token on the first space of its track. After this is done, you're going to reveal five province cards and place a Son of Haman tile in each of the revealed provinces on the board, along with a black cube. Reveal five more provinces and place a messenger meeple along with a gold cube on these. You are then going to shuffle the province deck again and again reveal five cards and place a Son of Haman tile and a black cube on the revealed provinces. Then you're going to take those cards and start the province discard pile with them. Next, reveal the top card of the messenger deck. This card indicates the special ability that a particular messenger can use in the course of the game. Lastly, you'll want to deal out the action cards. The number of cards each player gets depends on how many players there are. To keep things simple, let's say there are three players, so each will get five cards. Put the rest of the action cards to the side as the action deck and you're ready to play. To start the game, each player, without consulting the others, selects an action card from their hand and places it on the table face down. Once everyone has done so, all the cards are revealed and placed in numerical order. In this case, we have 1, 10, and 15. Now that all the cards have been put in order, it's time to resolve the actions. On each action card, there is a loyal action and a corrupt action, and for each card, the players fulfill the actions as best they can, starting with the loyal action and then the corrupt. If they can't follow the instructions on a section, the players move on to the next. Once both actions on all of the cards have been resolved, discard them, and then the players choose another card from their hand as before and repeat the process until they each only have one card left. Now looking at an action card, you will notice this section down here called the end effect. And this section is skipped until this point. When the players lay down their last card, neither the loyal nor corrupt actions are played and instead only the end effect is resolved. As with the other actions on the cards, if you can't follow the instructions, skip them. Once all the players have played all their cards, the round ends. Take all the played action cards and shuffle them back into their deck. Deal out the cards as before and start the next round. The game immediately ends when you run out of either color cube, or the action cards advance the calendar token to the last month, Adar. As stated before, when the game ends, if any of the provinces on the board have more black cubes than gold, the players lose. This means that the players need to strategize not only what cards to play, but how to carry them out. Some cards you'll want to play just so you don't have to deal with the end effect at the end of a round. Once you've mastered the strategy of this game, try adding the Sons of Haman deck to the mix. At the start of every round, this deck gives a particular Son of Haman a special ability to further the plot against the Jewish people. And that's how you play the game Purim. And to learn more about the backstory of this game and the holiday the game is named after, check out the Book of Esther. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out, catch you later.